Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome back to week five. Yes, uh, in the UBL versus the Morolt or Morolt and his Slovenian Slow Bros. Now, this is a team that I've been having a rough time uh, actually kind of deciding for. Not because the team itself is really tough, just to kind of really rub it in against Morolt. It all depends on how awful the game goes. But. Uh, the, the reason this game is tough to actually go up against is not because of the Pokemon I face, but rather my opponent himself. Um, I'm actually, like, I'm building this team on Tuesday, and I we go into battle Saturday somewhere down the line there, and he has yet to face Vepsis, as of about recording this video, and uh, he is a very, very, like, uneven player. He can be really, really strong, or he can have a really rough time. Uh, the thing is here, if you're playing his very best, like, he had one of those really good days... I, I know I'm screwed, like, this is a this is a player that really, really can get inside of your head. And if it does that, and it predicts right, it doesn't necessarily matter what I bring. And I think that's the rough part, that makes it tough, because it doesn't, it, my design of my team is as good as it's gonna be, no matter what he brings, but I know he plays so, so I would say weird. And I feel that's, that's not what I'm trying to say, it's rather that he really, really just l switches between play styles and gains momentum, lose momentum, and I don't know if he does it willingly or not. It's it's strange, but it also gives him, like, a strange play gives him very often and not a momentum gaining, and that really has me fairly scared. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think he's a good player, so that's not what I'm trying to say, but rather, due to his playstyle, switching things up all the time, it's very hard to get a grip on him, and I always try to pinpoint uh, situations that I would say brings me momentum. Um, so with that said, we're going up against a team that has an Infernape. Can we just talk about that we have a team with an Infernape? I really, really hate facing it, I love using it. Infernape is tough. Hydreigon is fine. Ish, I think I bring the right team to kind of parry that uh, Needle King, which um, can be tough depending on the situations. I do believe I have the mustard to survive it. Raikou, which is his speediest threat. Slowbro, Sylveon, Among Us, very very tough course. Sylveon in particular can be very nasty against me because the team I'm bringing is not decide decidedly forced to fend that off since I'm actually dictating of not using Mega Sis over this battle which can actually bite me in the ass. Among Us is a Pokemon I can't offensively check well. Um, I have, have an, as a situation here as you guys can see on the side with safety goggles we're gonna go onward but Among Us is a setup situation for me. Uh, it's a Pokemon that actually defensively checks everything I have so we're gonna treat it as such. Empoleon? Well I always liked Empoleon. It's one of those Pokemon that are self and defying at the same time. Self Rocking is probably one of the better ones. Shakes the lot of queens really well. Yeah, it's a Pokemon and a half. It really is tough. John Mega, which I'm not scared for. But at the same time, that is a Pokemon that do dictate quite hard um, how this game is going to turn out due to the tinted lens or speed boost. If it brings it, it's annoying no matter what. It then has Kumala, which I don't think is a real threat. And then we have Bayonet, the Mega Variant, which all sorts of purposes is tough, uh, but it's easy for my team as I constructed to deal with it. That said, it is a Prankster user with Destiny Bond, Thunder Wave, or Will Wisp, and I'm gonna, of course, hate it for that. That's why Greninja is here. It's mainly here to parry any type of cr prankster deviations in taunt, um, like I said before, the destiny bond and the, the status. Greninja is shaking that quite right. Uh, we're actually going to go over the team itself. Like I said, Saigard with safety goggles, it's supposed to actually just set up versus Among Us, which I believe are his strongest defensive Pokemon versus me. Slowbro is absolutely there too, but I don't believe Slowbro effectively deal that well with Saigard. So, with that said, of course, Stats here, absolutely defensive. We are speed enough here to outspeed uh, Nido King, actually, if it is the modest set, which I fairly believe it is. But also, one Dragon has do ensure us to outspeed Raikou. 
Uh, would you believe? I do believe we need two dragon dances to be as effective as we can. The set here is thousand arrows, toxic, extreme speed, and dragon dance. I was considering iron hand or iron tail, but depending on how the Pokemon's are beating, I would say um, if Slowbro is still fairly healthy, it is a fair switch in here. Besides Among Us, that means we can toxic dead and whittle it down by that way. Um, since Ice Beam doesn't KO us, we are able to get at least two thousand arrows against that. If we are forced to, we're going to do it. But yeah, Saigard is a really, really decisive set depending on which Pokemon he brings. Among Us is absolutely the ones we want to see. Uh, then we have Thunderous. This Thunderous is actually quite interesting one. It's a timid variant, able to outspeed Infernape. After one nasty plot, we should be able to steamroll this whole team. Uh, he really doesn't have anything for it. Um, like Kumala possibly, but like I said, I don't see Kumala. Um, the thing we have to watch out for is possible Scarfers here, and of course Raikou, which naturally outspeeds it. Um, we have a combination here, which a, a bit of a defense investment here. Besides that, um, I don't believe those that does it justice. You guys see exactly what it's all about. Um, a, a stat should, of course, of not getting too stealth frog damaged by the HP, basically. That's why it's there. We hit him par ice for obvious reasons. Uh, I was considered Psyche MC. But realize that if I am nasty plot, I really, really want to set up against as many things as possible. So Slowbro and Empoleon are very, very likely to be swept by this Pokemon. It forces them out, but also if they decide, my opponent decides to sack play, Yasha Bear is going to save me, and I'm going to get a nasty plot behind me and want to kill them. It also is one of those things, if Slowbro is an assault vest variant, uh, the nasty plot is given to be able to knock that out anyway. Uh, the attacks we're going with are Thunderbolt, Sludge Wave, Hidden Power, Nasty Plot. This means that Assault Vest Standard Raikou are able to fend off against this Pokemon. However, I don't believe Raikou to be a tremendous threat versus me because of my other Pokemons. And, um, well, I'm going to go by that, aren't I? It's absolutely a Pokemon that I think will do well here. And, um, yeah, I, I hope it does. Like, it all depends, like I said, there. The, the, the biggest issue is his Scarfers, which Pokemon will be Scarfed. Uh, I definitely feel Hydreigon can be one of those, and also Nidoking can be that, if it comes. And Infernape even so, but I really hope it isn't, because he actually needs Mag Punch. I believe he needs Mag Punch to be able to deal with my Greninja. We're going to go over that more why, but it's absolutely a Pokemon that one kills it. Uh, Leyenshi, first time we're bringing, um, I would say, a fatter... Daiyanshi, um, this set is absolutely made for his defensive Pokemon that can potentially shake Daiyanshi. Uh, it's supposed to only set up rocks will his team down, depending on what it brings. Stealth Rock can be crucial um, for John Mega, if anything. But yeah, um, really heavily defensive, special defensive invested with a lot of HP. We have a small speed investment to be able to outspeed a bulky Sylveon. The reason for that is skill swap. You actually would be surprised there, but skill swap is is there for three reasons, I would say. It is to nullify the um, um, the pixelate ability on um, Sylveon, which could very well be Hyper Voice and Hit of Our Fire. So we should be able to check that quite nicely, even though we don't have leftovers. Um, it also is to snag the regenerators from Pokemons. He has Mianchao for that. No, he doesn't have... He have Mongus and Slowbro, which are both excellent switch into DNC, which is why we have Psyshock to be able to deal with uh, Among Us, which is actually quite fair Pokemon against this. And last but foremost is that um, if he has a John Mega, <laughs> we can snag that speed boost. We can also snag Prankster, which is quite alright. It just basically is to nullify any kind of shenanigans he can do. But quite frankly, it is to screw John Mega over. If we can snag either Speed Boost or, you know, for very unlikely cases, snag a Tinted Lens, we don't care about Empoleon because Empoleon do wall this set and it is extremely sackable versus that. I don't think Empoleon is a threat towards my team, but I also know that Empoleon are a Pokemon that are switching in well versus this. And we're going to treat it as such and not try to say in versus that. Uh, worst case scenario, we're going to actually skill swap Torrent. That's going to be cool. I really hope we snag the fire and really see something very spicy. If that's the case, then we actually actually kind of nullify that Pokemon somewhat. 
the yeah mm. we'll see what happens i'm not convinced about this diane she said it was either that or mesprit having rocked but a better idea for mesprit for this battle con gelder though yeah it's it's a threat it's a solstice variant this time around um and it's adamant because it actually has the power. We have guts to be able to snag those skull burns from Napoleon. It should have that. And yeah, the stats are quite up there. We have four speed investment. It's basically if he tries to creep me with any of his lower speed Pokemon, that should be very unlikely. But we did that anyway. Because I don't need to invest in special attack. Like that was the real reason. Um, <laughs> attack wise, we have Brain Punch, Knock Off, Ice Punch, and Poison Jab. Now, I was considering Mag Punch because it does make sense versus uh, uh, versus Hydreigon. But then again, Hydreigon can't really do too much against this special defensive. And I really want to soak play this, which means if I'm taking a Draco, I want Retaliate with the Drain Punch. I want to recover no matter what comes in. Plus, Poison Jab yeah, makes a ton of sense for the Sylveon. We don't want that to be an opening. But if it is a defensive Sylveon... It is very risky for me to go on Poison Jab because it do slightly over 50%. Uh, it actually isn't doing that much as I was kind of hoping for. That means I don't want to showcase that unless it's gonna KO. Um, this is very likely Sylveon do practice Ice Shock also. Uh, if it is a Wish Protect variant, I really, really don't want to showcase uh, Poison Jab because then it means that it can basically Hyper Voice stall me in some aspects. And if I haven't skill swapped it before, then yeah, it's gonna hurt, and I don't want to be in that situation. Um, so that's what I felt. Um, Poison Jab is only there to KO. Ice Punch is actually doing a significant amount of damage towards the majority of his team. Knockoff does deal somewhat with Slowbro. Yeah, Slowbro do deal with Contender fairly well here. And like I said, Drain Punch. Very good neutral play. Now to the meat of the game. Greninja making his real debut. I hope. We actually had one game before. Uh, I've been heavily considering dropping Reninja, but for this game, it makes sense. Uh, first and foremost, it's a jolly variant. That's not right. It's supposed to be timid. Glad I saw that. Um, <laughs> wow, that would be nasty. Um, we are creeping Raikou. That's really all we have need to do. We're heavily specially offensive with some HP, because why not? Attacks here are Water Shuriken. Ice Beam, Dark Pulse, and Spikes. Thing is here, Spikes is only there because I don't believe his best switch is like his. He has, what is that, three Defoggers or two? I guess John Mega learns, isn't it? We have a Spinner Kamala. Uh, he, he can uh, Defog with Hydreigon and Empoleon. Um, so Spikes is just annoying, at least for Empoleon coming on and actually being forced to actually Defog. Dark Pulse does do a fair chunk there. Ice Beam does deal with, well with the rest. And Water Shuriken is to take his Mach Punch from his uh, Infernape off guard. Or even better, if it is a Scarf set, Water Shuriken just guarantees me that I actually do kill, kill him. The thing is here though, Water Shuriken doesn't do necessarily all that much of damage. So we need to whittle him down to at least 50% to guarantee KO it. And that's, that's tough. But that's our best bet. Greninja here overall isn't necessarily the most crucial member. But it's made here for two reasons. One, to deal with Inferno head on. Two, screw Bayonet up quite well. And also set up Spice against it. Because Bayonet can't necessarily do anything versus this. It can go for Dazzling Gleam. But it doesn't have any special attacks. So I don't care for it. Last Pokemon in this game. Assault Vest. I've been longing to use this set for so long. Assault Vest Mesprit. Uh, it's a modest variant. Able to outspeed just a speedier Sylveon. I guess that was my best bet. Uh, because I really didn't need to creep anything else. We have some defense investments here, and we have really high special defense and really, really high special attack. This set is able to soak something and retaliate and kill it in return. Um, it's, it's not my best set, but it is a set that does work well against this team, mainly because the combination I have here is able to hit something at least neutral or really high damage. We're able to take um, a Specs, Dark Pulse, hopefully we don't get burned, and kill it with Dazzling Gleam. That's Hydreigon going down. Inferno can't KO us by, by default, but you turning is something he can do. So uh, that's something to watch out for, of course. Uh, if it is a Life or variant of Nidor King, we are not going to be able to outspeed it, but we're going to be able to survive it, and Psyshock should kill in return. 
Raikou can't do it too much against this. Slowbro, unless it is as a Soul Fest, can't do anything versus this. Sylveon, if it is defensive, this is going to be a good way of checking that. I can't win versus the defensive, I should say. We have huge side if you cannot just um, build up damage. Just to catch him off guard if you can wish protect against me. Uh, Among Us don't deal well with this. It actually is close to one kill by Future Sight. And that's something we're going to do. Empoleon, yeah, Thunderbolt is there. Watch out for that. John Mega, Thunderbolt, Bayonet. I'm not going to say versus a Bayonet. It could have Pursuit. That's... <laughs> Gotta watch out for that. Um, but yeah, this team is actually really well. Um, I did consider Celeste for this matchup. A defensive one with Protect. Um, just to kind of stop me for Leap from ravaging through my team. It was either that or Saigon. You know when I'm... When I... Saigard as maybe that means that it's not ideal for the matchup, but he is fairly weak to well 2000 arrows. So we're gonna decide to sack or not sack it, but bench Salasal this time around. And I'm gonna hopefully be able to soak damage. The reason Mega Scissor isn't here is because while Sylveon is an extremely strong threat and will spam uh, hyper voices. Um, it will kill a hidden power of fire. I won't be able to set up against that. And Slowbro really deals well with Mega Sister to some extent uh, if I don't get Sword Stance up. So, yeah, I felt it was far too risky bringing it. Um, I mean, Sylveon, if it is what I think it's gonna be, which is a Hyper Voice, Psy Shock, Hidden Power of Fire combination with possible Calm Mind, it's going to be impossible to stop. I'll easily see Slowbro, Among Us, and Sylveon as one of those really strong cores. Then Hydreigon's gonna be there. Uh, Infernape and then Empoleon or Mega Bayonet for me. Um, that's what I'm feeling. I I absolutely don't see Nido King making it. I don't see uh, John Mega making it. I think there are two Pokemon that are quite tough to bring. But yeah, Infernape, Hydreigon, Slowbro, Sylveon, Among Us, and then maybe Empoleon or Mega Bayonet. Those are the ones I think that will make the game. Uh, Mega Bayonet is not that scary with the team I have. But had I gone for what I, my original plan is, I would have leave myself quite open for that. And I know I need a dark type only to keep Bayonet checked. Thank you, Gen7, for making Prankster nerfed. It makes Thunderous worse, but hell, he's keep Bayonet off my back. I appreciate it for that. Uh, so anyway, with that said, let's see how this game goes. Um, we're going to battle, like I said, on Saturdays for a few days away from there. If I make any changes still then, I'm going to say that in that video. So with that said... Let's have the transition. Whoa. Just as worse as every other. What is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to the UBL. And of course, versus Marold and his Slovenian slow bros. Now, if you see my team analysis, you know that I had a rough idea what I'm going to up against. And yeah, I thought I had that. But we are seeing a John Mega reference preview, which really I've been fruit of. The one other aspect was actually that I, I had Raikou in mind and I had, had Inferno absolutely in mind. Not seeing them really had me kind of shaken here because I was really convinced that I was facing a Trick Room team where John Mega was basically like something to outstand there and together with actually um, Hydreigon. I felt those two were just there to check things and the other ones was going to be Trick Room. So I was, I was really scared going in here. <laughs> I, I was absolutely seeing an offensive Sylveon. And possible offensive sword stance um, Empoleon. That could have been really strange, but also very, very tough. Plus, Bayonet is actually quite an effective trick rumor. Even though it isn't ideal, it's able to do that. And of course, Slowbro is self sufficient in trick room, much like the NG. So, with that said, you know, mm, 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 mm. I, was, I was scared. I was scared as all hell. As, like I said before, Marold is one of those players that play uneven and. Um, it didn't help that uh, I had that very same feeling going in here. So my initial thought, go and start off with Conkelder, hoping it's a trick room team, just to kind of get as much as possible out of it before things turn to hell. Because I'm quite speedy for this game and I do not like trick room. So with that said, let's see what happens. So from the get go here, my opponent is going to lead off with uh, Sylveon. And I was just like, no, 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 no. Worst matchup possible. Now, I do have a Solvest Mesprit. That's going to be my switch in. But yeah, I'm not feeling it. This was 
this was a rough first turn for me as he goes for Hyper Voice which is good because that means it's pixelate, that means the NG is gonna be work just fine but it does a fair amount of damage, I'm a Salt Vest and it still does a lot so I'm just gonna go for ship damage, I basically want Kongelder to be able to KO it in return as he's gonna showcase Baton Pass which was um, that was new uh, as it goes to Fly Thingy and um, that's the John Mega. I don't have a switch of John Mega. I can't survive a hit if it is in Specs or Life Orb, but I really can't switch into it because it's going to be Tinted Lens. I'm sure the way I brought it in, and it's absolutely going to destroy my Mesprit, but it's fine. I can easily send in my um, uh, Thunderous and actually go directly for a Thunderbolt. Uh, his only switch in here should be Hydreigon, and uh, luckily for me, it actually does stay in there. We just get John Mega out of the way. Um, which is really, really, really good because I could have set it up here, but like I said, I knew this was a Tinted Lens variant, so I just needed to get that out of the way. As it brings his worst Sevdo. Now, I'll be honest, I was scared here. I was definitely feeling this is a Scarf variant. This is gonna be his very response as I went to Silmeria, hoping he didn't go for a Flash Cannon. As it goes for Dark Pulse, and it's absolutely not Specs, I can definitely guarantee that, but I'm gonna actually stay in, try to just scout what it is, if it is. Uh, Locked into something and the way it switches out. Yeah, it felt like that as I go directly for stealth rocks and uh, Yeah, and Polygon is an absolute beast in this game. Like that's a Pokemon. I don't check well Well, like I said, I don't fear it. I know it can do really well. So I switch in Gohan air knowing that um, He could go for defog or skull. Either way is fine. He goes for skull and I was like burn 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 He doesn't burn. I never been skull burn in this league and this is the first time experience something like that and he goes back to his Sylveon. I had it been burned, I would have stayed in versus this matchup because I'm no guarantee range, or I am actually still now in guarantee range of a possible poison jab. Um, but I didn't want to risk it. I don't want that residual damage just yet. As I switch him to Silmeria yet again, just to see what he's gonna do. As he goes for Hyper Voice, it does such a big chunk. It does like roughly 40 on me. Um, and I'm actually gonna go directly for a Moonblast thinking he wanted to switch out here. I really felt that, you know, I'm I'm in a fair spot uh, as he goes for Wish. And here's where I started realizing, had I brought Scissor, I would have been in a very fine spot here because he has Wish Protect, Baton Pass, and Hyper Voice. He has nothing for Celasil. He has nothing for Mega Scissor with this set. And I was kicking myself so hard because I knew it was such a grand opening and I kind of feel I, I misjudged that. Um, I don't get that opening, and of course, he brings in Napoleon yet again. They're not actually going to go for skill swap this time because I thought, all right, we're going to play that game. I'll try to fend you off with, through there, but no. <laughs> we snagged the torrent, which it was something I was fearing that you know I'll showcase in the worst, pos worst possible way, and we see the leftovers. It's it's not a great time. Um, now my switchings here are roughly the same, which is that Gohan is going to be the switch in. He's gonna go for a defog, and that's gonna be fine. And um, I'm I'm still not sure I want to go for a poison jab just yet. I'm actually gonna decide go for an ice punch. My initial thought here was that I get neutral damage on something, uh, but he goes directly for slow bro, and I felt like I went for knockoff last time. You know that would have been a big risk, but it pays off because he has an eject bottom of everything, so he gets a very, very free switching, and that free switching is to hammer the bayonet. Um, I don't know what the bayonet wanna do. I'm fearing it's gonna be Will-O-Wisp or Thunder Wave or anything like that, so I decided to, we, we, we get no, I don't wanna risk getting paralyzed or anything like that, so I'm gonna actually directly go to Ermac, the Greninja, just to scout the Mega Bayonet's idea. Um, because this was basically what Greninja was all about for this game, setting up spikes against it and actually kind of nullify it. Um, we see skill swap, I was like, oh, really? So you had the same idea for me to ruin Conkelder with actually getting rid of Guts. Uh, actually switching to worse Sevdo. Now here's the thing, I really want to find out if it's Scarfed or not. Uh, so I'm going to actually decide to stay in and go for spikes because I know U-Turn won't kill me and it would have been the correct play. He is not, and I really can stress this enough, he is not scarfed. So, and he went for, not only that, he went for Draco, which means he lose special attack. Which means I'm kind of feeling that, okay, I have a very, very big chance with Thunderous to go for Nasty Plot and Sweep, because he should switch out here, knowing that I could very well sweep him. Well, that said, 
Um, that is not what happened because he stays in as a go for nasty plot. Uh, I was thinking that was a very big risk, but he goes for a Simu. Oh, I was feeling, oh no, did it go for Draco? But I have no idea which animation is what, so I was basically waiting here to find out which Dra which seed was. As we go into see the Dark MC, the Black Hole Eclipse, and that shouldn't do more than 50%. Um, and since we know it is not Scarf or anything like that, we. We should be able to KO him in return. Hidden Power Eyes is guaranteed KOing after that kind of damage we got on him with the Dark Bull. So, yeah, we knock him out. Um, so, I was happy about that. Definitely didn't expect that. Now, the thing is here the only thing that can take me out is Bayonet. Shadow Snake is not KOing me. Sucker Punch can KO me, but absolutely, Prankster Destiny Bond will take me out. But I was thinking, I'll, I'll take this risk. At least get it out of the way. But yes, Shadow Snake, we are guaranteeing to survive that. As Thunderbolt, of course, gonna eradicate it. And um, yeah, I guess you guys can kind of figure with how this game is gonna turn out. He's gonna send in agony, yet he's not gonna feel all of it. Um, like, all I really can say is because we do strike, well, we do get a 4 0 win here due to that kind of situation. I was really fearing the Destiny Bond there on. Um, <laughs> what do you say on that mega bayonet? I was really like, oh, if that happens, you know, I'll have to figure stuff out. Uh, I, I possibly lose, but I didn't. I had to take that risk basically, um, because at least I get bayonet out of the way, and that means that uh, I need to find a way to kind of strike down. I guess you'd say uh, the slow bro, which inherently wasn't no longer weak necessarily to um, Conkelder, but we don't get to even. S find that situation and I should say this my opponent here Merol did tell me after the game that he thought he was a Draconium C um, and not Dark MC so I really want to kind of stretch what that means for the game as, as he protects stalls here which is kind of cool it, it's one of those things like if you can do it why not I mean the game is already over anyway why not see if you can get those three protects in a row as at least gets two of those but yeah as I said there, we really just talked about it, and the thing is there, had it been the Drake UMC, I would not have been able to be in a situation where I would risk the Shadow Sneak or Sucker Punch situation, and of course the possible Destiny Bond, uh, because I would have been in my lower 30 HP, which would have meant that I would force forced to save Thunderous versus everything else, and actually try to deal with Bayonet in a different way. So it wouldn't have been, I would say, as graceful as this game turned out to be for me. So right, I do want to kind of leave you guys with some other thoughts. Um... I'll say that to this, like, let's say now this had been a Dragonium C variant of a Dragon, like I said, it would have been put him in 30s, and that would have basically strained my team to force me to play Dianchi versus Bayonet getting shipped, and then of course only to invite Empoleon again, I would have sacked Dianchi, I would have gone into uh, Thunders again, would have just gone for another Thunderbolt, and basically... Bayonet would probably be the only Pokemon to be able to take that. That would have forced to be sacking Conkeldur. I would have gone back and forth by that. Remember now that I do have Poison Jab on my Conkeldur, so eventually I would have been forced to go for that versus um, versus that um, Sylveon. That would be whether I could want to kill Slowbro or not with Thunderous. And of course I could have set up with Saigar the one Dragon as at least, but it wasn't ideal. Uh, Saigar never had to come into play here at all, and Conkeldur didn't get to showcase what it was made to do in this game and just overall I felt due to that kind of risk my opponent did take there we're actually going for Dra Draco versus Greninja and not being scarfed he gave me one of those really strange openings and I really want to call it a strange opening because I knew it could have been Destiny Bond potentially on Bayonet if that were the case we would have been a having a very hard game ahead of us <laughs> and I would have been screwed but besides that I just I thought it took a big risk knowing that that wasn't what he had on his bayonet because Thunderous actually got one of those very very good fantastic openings that you just can't leave it to have. Even with the Dark UMC or as you Dracon UMC, I still get the setup, I still get to KO at least one thing and Fundy is very good at killing stuff, it actually is. So um, yeah, I'll say it as it is. I was surprised how I won this game and um, I think Marold had me the first, like, let's say at least 15 turns was his game. He pressured me very well. I didn't have switch-ins. But as I was finding out about the sets and nothing outspeeding things, I know which Pokemon could do what versus him. 
and I took that very big risk there with the, or not very, I took a possible risk with Thunderous to get, because that was probably my strongest opening, besides actually going against Empoleon and Slowbro, which was my initial thought how I wanted to play the game, which overall might actually have been safer, thinking about it, because in the end of the day, Hydreigon was not able to outspeed me anyways, there was no drawback for doing that play, so I'll, I'll be honest and say that. Um, that would probably, even though it does reward me for a win, it still was a far riskier play than I should have done, consider the situation. And like I said, Moral plays this game through and through very well. It is that little small mistake that is the difference between him winning or losing. But it is such a small mistake that I wouldn't... I wouldn't say like he deserved to lose because of that. It just is one of those things that it... That opening leaves me more effective than I thought he would. And of course... He was probably hoping that Shadow Sneak would be enough to KO my Thunderous, but I have defense investment. I'm glad I had that. <laughs> I'm very glad I had that. Because I don't know. If I was a standard Fundy, I probably I wouldn't survive that. Uh, my initial thought with Thunderous was actually to try to be able to soak damage from other things than the Bayonet, but it worked fine here. Uh, but besides that, like I said, I'm happy how the game turned. I'm happy that Thunderous got to showcase. That is a very big threat. It's not only a defogger for my team, it can do stuff also. And to my old major props for bringing a team that I did not suspect. Um, it was very hard to play against this. Um, I rarely built to check what stuff are, which means I'll, I'm playing with a little too less stamina versus teams. And when it is a defensive team that can be anything and I predict wrong, it does strain a lot of processing for me and that's something very few people can do and you did this wonderfully and only like the only regret I have is um, or the only thing I think was unfortunate for the matchup is that I think had Hydreigon been scarfed I probably wouldn't have won this game I'm convinced I wouldn't uh, so with that said guys thank you for the course as always watching and I hope you enjoyed this game and make sure to check out Marl's sign of the battle as uh, I'm sure he will provide more of his process because his team, as I said, is very, very well designed versus me because I have was nowhere near guessing right here and that just gives me more respect for Moral. He's definitely is one of those players that stands out because his playstyle is just so weird yet so fantastic to watch and just experience. So for anything, thank you for that, Moral. And for everybody else watching, thank you for doing so and I'll see you next week versus the OCI. Something with Whalemers, I'm screwing that up already. Nice. <laughs> okay.